Aloha, I'm Wendy Osher with Maui Now, and today we're joined by Dr. Stacey Ammerman, an OB physician at the Maui Memorial Medical Center. Welcome and thanks for being with us today. Hi, thanks for having me, Wendy. Hi, today um, we'd like to talk about measures in place for delivering a baby at Maui Memorial Medical Center. I know there's a lot of uh, concern within the community, just given the fact that we still have a pandemic going on. Mm -hmm. um, can we jump right into the questions? since there's sure. a lot of them. Yeah. Um, we have several soon-to-be mothers ask if it's safe to have a baby at the hospital at this time. Um, I 100% think it's safe to have a baby at the hospital at this time. Um, despite the pandemic and despite COVID, the hospital really continues to be the safest place to have your baby. I definitely understand their concerns. Um, when women are pregnant, they already kind of have an underlying level of anxiety that can occur just with all the changes and all the new things that are happening and this has heightened it for sure. Um, but you know, we've been very lucky, number one, as a state to be one of the, have the lowest cases in the nation. Um, you know, so we have done a really good job managing our numbers here. Um, the hospital has put a lot of protocols in place to ensure safety for patients uh, and for babies coming into the hospital. Um, so that has been very reassuring um, and patients can really be, definitely comfortable that they're entering into um, a, a safe place to have their babies. So can you talk about some of those protocols that have been implemented to not only safeguard the patients, but also the public and the community at large? Sure. Um, one of the biggest ones that has occurred recently is um, universal testing um, is now occurring in the hospital. So what that means is anybody who is getting admitted to the hospital, whether it's through the emergency department, whether through a direct admit, or to labor and delivery is getting tested, regardless of whether or not they have symptoms. Um, we had already been doing this in the community um, for patients that were also scheduled surgery, scheduled C-sections, scheduled inductions, uh, but now we have the ability to do more rapid testing in the hospital. So once the patient arrives, they have a nasopharyngeal swab done um, by a nurse, and that result is back um, usually within about three hours. So it's really helpful in knowing that if this patient is going to be higher risk to, um, to other patients, to employees in the hospital, and where they need to be um, in the hospital. Um, other things that are occurring and have been occurring for a while are um, temperature checks. So anybody who comes into the hospital is having a symptom check every day, a temperature check every day, and they're all given masks to wear um, while they're in the hospital. So everybody has a mask on at all times. Um, in addition, um, you know, the hospital does have adequate PPE for the appropriate scenarios. Um, the hospital's never been cleaner, um, so that I, I do feel that we're doing a really good job um, taking care of the patients and ensuring their safety. You did mention the PPE. What is the protocol for PPE? Um, and is it different between a vaginal delivery and say a C-section delivery? So just in general, everybody has a mask on while they're in the hospital. So during labor, um, that might mean your nurse just has a, a general surgical mask on. When we get to the second stage of labor, which is when a patient is pushing, um, which is where we're a little more concerned with um, aerosolization in the room, um, the, the nurse, the doctor, um, anybody who's going to be in the room with the patient will be, wear an N95 and usually have a surgical mask over that. Um, we have protective eyewear, um, we have protected headgear, and then we have a gown on during the delivery. And this is the same for cesarean section. Um, the, the mom who's delivering and her partner will also have a mask on um, during their stay at the hospital, including during labor. Let's talk about the... Um support person. How are they tested? Are they tested every day? And how does that work out? So the support person gets screened downstairs when, when the patient arrives to the hospital. Um, so they have a symptom check, they have a temperature check, um, they're given a mask. During the stay, um, as you may or may not know, there, there is a no visitor policy at the hospital, but in labor and delivery, you can have one support person with you at all times. So they are encouraged to try to stay with the mom um, for the most part and try not to go in and out of the hospital and minimize that as much as possible. Um, they do have, um, they are screened every day with a symptom check, check and temperature check. Um, they are not COVID tested though, um, because they are not an, an admitted patient. So they do not get COVID testing while in the hospital. 
Okay, and how does that no visitor policy impact the maternity tours that you guys usually offer to expectant mothers? So unfortunately, they've had to halt the tours because they just don't want a lot of unnecessary people um, coming into the hospital um, that don't need to be there. So the tours are halted, but they are working on doing a virtual tour, um, which should hopefully be available on the website soon, which would be really nice and really helpful to have on there anyway, um, despite the pandemic. Um, and so that they also usually offer um, childbirth classes at the hospital and that has had to be put on hold. But again, I believe they are going to be doing um, virtual classes coming up here in the future. What are the concerns, if any, that you've had in the community of, from expectant moms? And what would you say to them to address those concerns? Um, again, I think they're just highly concerned about their own, you know, welfare and the welfare of their baby that they're going to be giving birth to um, and just making sure that they really are going to be in a safe place for delivery. I mean, unfortunately, we have one hospital. There's, we don't have separate COVID hospitals. So when people are sick, they have to come to the hospital. Um, what is nice about labor and delivery in Maui Memorial is that it really is kind of an um, isolated unit. The don't have other doctors or nurses walking through our unit or floating in and out. So the people that are there are the people that are there to deliver your baby, take care of the nurses that are there to take care of you, the anesthesiologist that's there to give you your epidural. Um, and we are kind of a separate um, area. And with all the new protocols in place, I feel like it's, you know, very safe for sure for uh, moms to, moms and their partners to be there and not having to worry about whether they are, you know, picking up the virus, are they going to be passing it to their baby or bringing it home to their families? Um, but definitely, it's an understandable concern. But I just really do want to reassure people that it really is a safe place. Um, and every doctor and nurse I know would not hesitate to have their baby in that hospital right now. Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, speaking about the babies themselves, what are the extra precautions being taken to protect the newborn children? So the newborns are rooming in with the mom as much as possible. Um, all of the procedures, whether it's you know medication administration or baths, are done at the bedside with the mom in the room. Um, the babies do need a hearing test before they leave the hospital, and that is done in the nursery. Um, we, they are not really allowing anybody in the nursery that's not a physician or a nurse, um, unless the mom really does have to come in because the baby's so sick that they can't be outside of the nursery. Um, but other than that, the, they're trying to keep the babies as protected as possible. And with that, we really are trying to discharge, you know, these patients that are healthy and don't have any need to stay in the hospital longer than they need to um, home as, as soon as we can. Um, if there is a case where an OB patient or a support person is identified as someone, as a person under investigation, how do you guys proceed and what do you do if an expected mom tests positive? So we've been very lucky that this has not occurred yet, but we definitely are ready for it when it does happen. Um, we have isolated off um, three rooms in the, um, post, the end of the postpartum ward that are kind of off um, on their own. They have separate HEPA filters in place. Um, and they are ready. So if we do have a, a person under investigation or a positive mom, they will go to that room. They would labor in that room and then they would stay and have their postpartum care in that room. Um, in addition, full PPE would be used at all times. So not just during a delivery, um, but anytime anybody is um, in that room with the patient, uh, they would be assigned just one nurse. So they, during a shift, they would only have one nurse that is going in and out and that nurse would not be assigned to any other patients on the floor. Um, so, you know, we are, we're definitely ready for it. Um, if they have to have a cesarean section and they are, you know, a positive patient, then they would actually be having surgery in the main OR and not having surgery on labor and delivery. Okay. Without the tours in place at this time, what's the best, best way for someone to get in touch with the um, labor and delivery in the OB department? So they can definitely call the hospital directly if they have any specific hospital policy questions. It's also the same number that you call when it's time to have your baby or if you're not, not sure if you need to go into the hospital or not. Um, but that the direct number to labor and delivery is 242-2436. Um, in addition, I would also encourage patients, if they're just having general concerns or questions about what to expect during labor, 
to first talk to their OBGYN. So go to their doctor, discuss these um, concerns, get your questions answered, because they might be able to answer these questions so we don't have to overload the hospital. But definitely labor and delivery is there to answer any questions that um, maybe may come up. Okay, and with a lot of discussion about a second wave that could be possible, um, is there anything that you'd like to offer as advice to expectant mothers, um, just what to expect and um, maybe some thoughts from your end? Yeah, I feel like with the, this first you know, outbreak, we learned a lot. Um, we had a lot of changing policies as we gained more information with the virus. Um, so I feel like we're definitely a lot more prepared for a second wave with having the appropriate testing in place, the appropriate policies already in place, the appropriate PPE. Um, the outpatient clinics too, in addition to the hospital, have been making their own policies and um, you know, potentially screening patients outside, not allowing uh, partners or visitors to come in with them to the appointments, doing more telemedicine. So we're already prepared in that sense. That being said, I feel like this first wave has prepared us for the second wave and we, would, we will be able to act you know, very efficiently when the second wave, when we start seeing evidence of a second wave occurring um, so that we're not starting behind the ball already. Um, we're already gonna be ahead of the game, so. Okay, great. Is there any questions that I didn't ask that you think are important, uh, maybe for a mother their first time? Um, I mean, everything is probably new to them already. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, again, I just really want to keep an open dialogue with your OBGYN. Um, you know, again, I discussed the fact that when you're pregnant, you do sometimes have a little higher level of anxiety, and um, that, that's been shown in recent studies that with the pandemic, those levels of anxiety are for sure going up during pregnancy, and pregnancy just feels different right now. Postpartum feels different. People aren't having baby showers. They're not having their gender reveal parties. They're not having 10 people show up to the hospital to congratulate them. So just really making sure you have a good, you know, core support person at home um, and making sure that you discuss any concerns with your physician um, so that we can, you know, address them right away and, um, you know, help you manage, um, manage the situation. So. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Again, that was Dr. Stacey Ammerman, an OB physician with the Maui Memorial Medical Center, sharing with us some information about safe baby delivery at the hospital. If you'd like to learn more, visit us online at mauinal.com. I'm Wendy Osher.